Hey guys, today is September 23rd. Not a very special day, but for me it is because today is our final day of our breeding our brilliant rasboras. We're going to do a water change here. We're going to show you how we do that, and we're also going to feed them as well. So for our water change, um, we don't do anything too special. We use a python, and we put a couple um, sleeves of pantyhose over it. This will be our second sleeve on there. Other guys, people might do it differently, more carefully and stuff, but you know, just kind of set it in, turn it on carefully, keep it at the top. Um, you'll be fine. And um, just kind of watch and make sure they don't get stuck against the fabric. And uh, we'll do a little 20%, 25% water change. Then we're going to feed them some uh, a lot of baby brown shrimp. changed so much in um, just in this past month since we first noticed them. We're starting to get that green line and the red um, end on our tail like the brilliant reservoirs do in our you know, full run. I think we have about 14 or 15 give or take a few um, which means we've met our number. Um, and I mean it's a really simple process. The reservoir parents are actually down there with some Car fry. But um, they were in here as dealer fish for our crevensis when we were breeding them. And um, bred the crevensis, they were breeding too much that we had to sell them. And the, the uh, brass ended up spawning um, on accident. It wasn't planned. And we saw, oh, they're getting spawning behavior. So we had a bunch of moss. And uh, sooner or later, a couple of uh, shards, I guess what you'd call them, they're so tiny. Showed up swimming in the water against the glass and stuff. So. A few of the foods we've been feeding them, obviously, live baby brown shrimp is essential. Um, it's not the first thing they can eat, um, but as soon as you can get them eating that, that's the best. Um, we uh, started them off with some powdered food, just some, um, I forget what the brand is, just some very fine powdered food. I think it's made by New Life Spectrum. And obviously some live vinegar eels. Um, we bought a culture for someone. They stay alive for a long while. You just make sure the vinegar's acidic and put an apple slice in there here or there and they live. It's perfectly fine. Mix it in with fresh water. These guys will chow down on it. Obviously now they're practically little tetras, so we feed them live baby brown shrimp. And occasionally we'll crush up some uh, flakes for them. Um, we put a little bit of sodium bicarbonate, which is uh, baking soda um, in with the vinegar eels because a little bit of vinegar, even though we mix it in with fresh water, will get in the water. Eventually that will build up. It doesn't like dissolve or air out. It stays in the water. When that builds up, it can be a little bit toxic. So I think we're good here. We did a little bit more than I wanted to, but I'll turn the water off here. water conditioner um, to this. You want to make sure you do this. Um, I mean we did a little bit more than 25 percent, probably more of a third of a about 30 percent ish. Once you do like 30 percent or more I would say maybe you should start using this or prime. Over here, I'm excited to, uh, in the future, breed these Geophagus heckleri, uh, or the uh, Threadfin Acara. Um, right now, they're only maybe a year old now, and it takes three years for them to grow out. Um, so, probably sometime 2022. Well, maybe they'll spawn before that, hopefully, but sometime next year, maybe they'll spawn. Um, probably want to move them to a tank with more sand. 
I might be setting up a 75 gallon in the future with some sand. Um, might do them and some of car and some other stuff that I can put. We got a couple more discus. We have uh, this light orange guy, it's really cool. And then we have this darker guy, similar to the one I have upstairs. And then we have two upstairs, kind of the same coloration um, as those two. And we're thinking about breeding those four. It's really handy to have a bathroom right next to here. No one really uses this anyway, so just permanently hooked up to the python for the fish room and the other tanks out there. Of course, when you do stuff upstairs, we have to take this. But uh, yeah, it is really convenient. Yeah, still got some smaller ones. Like if you look right above this pothos plants. Oh, uh, where do you go? Mm, oh yeah, right here. A really small guy compared to the rest of them. There, 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 there. Yeah, yeah. Most of them are pretty large and you can see their colors. So, so I'm just gonna, we've harvested some baby brine shrimp here and this is fresh water if you're wondering. I'm gonna give them to these guys. These guys are absolutely hammered. This stuff is so healthy for them. You don't want to feed it to them every single day for months on months because they'll just get addicted to it and they won't eat anything else. But certainly something that's not very, very suggested to include in their diet. Especially any baby fish you're trying to breed them. At least give them frozen brine shrimp, but baby brine shrimp, live baby brine shrimp, is the best. And all moose fish that can tell it's food, African sequins can. <laughs> Friends. The cars don't really eat it. These guys love this. Yeah, there they go. So, there we go. We got our, got our 10 plus brilliant raspberry fry. Got them in a 20 gallon accidentally. Um, but, uh, great to breed. Might continue to breed them for a little bit too.